Hi everybody, this is Victoria. Welcome back to another new episode of Discovering Art Together. Today we're going to jump in something super fun, getting into the fun stuff. We are going to learn about what is abstract expressionism. Ooh, so we're gonna learn what in the world that is abstract expressionism and also we're going to learn some cool interesting and important things about this particular art movement we'll also jump into seeing what characteristics it has and also learning who is the one that created and started this whole big art movement of abstract expressionism and some of the famous artists from this era of beautiful stylistic art. So if you guys are ready to start learning, let's get started. So our very first question is, what in the world is abstract expressionism? Is it similar to abstract art and it expresses? Maybe. Abstract expressionism is an artistic movement that emerged in the 1940s and 1950s that focuses on a shared curiosity in the utilization of abstraction as a means to express and or elicit emotion through artistic works. In an easier way to kind of understand what uh, abstract expression is, it has basically no reference to material objects or specific examples. Not concrete, um, not applied or particular, theoretical or anything like that. It's just hard to understand what exactly they are painting. It's just randomness. Gibberish. So what is so cool and so interesting and important about abstract expressionism? Expressionism. For abstract expressionists, they mainly focused on authenticity or value of a work lay in its directness and immediacy of expression. A painting is meant to be a revelation of the artist's authentic identity. The gesture, the artist's signature, is evidence of the actual process of the work's creation. An interesting thing about abstract expression is the art movement is an American painting which originated during the post-World War II era in the late 1940s. It became the first movement to specifically garner international recognition and put New York City at the heart of the Western art world, a position formerly occupied by Paris or Paris. The key ideas of abstract expressionist artworks are often showing motion or the movement made by the artist in the act of making the painting. So even if artists who did not create their artwork using like extravagant, like super big movements or gestures, in many cases, they achieve a sense of implied movement in the finished artwork by how they made marks on the canvas. Even today, Abstract expressionism is not only hot on the market, it also continues to resonate with contemporary creatives. Isn't that cool? Did you know that abstract expressionism actually has two main types of this particular art style? Most scholars identify two major stylistic tendencies within abstract expressionism. The first one is action painting, as shown by the energetic and gestural brushstrokes of Klein or the flung paint of Pollock. And the other one is called color field painting as seen in the simplified open areas of color favored by 
Newman, and Rothko. So here are some main characteristics that makes abstract expressionism abstract expressionism. So number one is non-objective works that are not represented in nature. Large brush strokes is number two. Number three is drips of paint and color swatches to create a two-dimensional canvas that reflects the artist's emotional and subconscious state. Number four is emphasize free, spontaneous, and personal emotion expression. Number five is they exercise considerable freedom of technique and execution to attain this goal. Abstract expressionism is best known for large-scale paintings that break away from traditional processes, often taking the canvas off the easel and using unconventional materials such as house paint. I did not know that. That's pretty interesting. So who actually created and started this whole art movement of abstract expressionism? The abstract expressionist movement itself is generally regarded as having begun with the paintings done by Jackson Pollock and Willem de Kooning in the late 1940s and early 50s. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the famous artists from this particular art era. First, definitely we have Jackson Pollock. He is best known for his action paintings and abstract expressionist works. For these pieces, many during his poured period, Pollock dripped paint onto canvas to convey the emotion of movement. They moved to a farmhouse in Long Island when Pollock had more space to work. It was there that he developed his signature drip painting technique, influenced by Native American sand paintings, European avant-garde artists, and contemporary scientific developments. Pollock's drip paintings changed everything. Next, we have Willem de Kooning. He was a leading figure of abstract expressionism. His style strongly influenced art after the World War II. De Kooning attended the Rotterdam Academy of Fine Arts and Techniques and was drawn to Cubism. He moved to the United States in 1926 and worked as a house painter. His style and techniques dive into his use of fluid paints large quantities and body movement to create powerful strokes on canvas, discover his techniques of mixing colors using different consistencies and alternating between painting and drawing. Let's take a look at Franz Klein. Klein is best known for his powerful black and white abstractions in which the vigorous brushstroke seems to embody the energy and gestures created in the act of painting. He typically began with a sketch, which he projected onto a wall, transforming simple lines into magnified abstract forms, and then replicated in paint. We also have Mark Rothko. He is best known for his color field paintings that depicted irregular and painterly rectangular regions of color, which he produced from 1949 to 1970. Although Rothko did not personally subscribe to any one school, he is associated with the American Abstract Expressionism movement of modern art. We also have Lee Krosner. Krosner began her breakthrough Little Images series from 1946 to 1950 with intensely worked, dense composition made from patches of fractured color and white linear designs. Intuitive and often destructive processes of discovery were vital to her working method. As she wrote, I like a canvas to breathe and be alive. There are definitely many more other awesome artists from 
abstract expressionism so feel free to check those out and do your own research to see what you can discover more about this particular and very cool and interesting art era. If you're curious to learn and see what came before abstract expressionism you can check out this video over here which is called surrealism what is surrealism and you can learn that particular art movement which is the one that came before abstract expressionism thanks again for watching and i hope you guys learned something new about abstract expressionism and if you like this video please remember to click the like button and also subscribe to get the latest updates so when a new episode like this comes out each week so keep you posted keep you updated and if you got any questions or would like to share some of your favorite things about abstract expressionism comment them down below i would love to learn what you love and also discover more new things if you guys discovered anything else new about abstract expressionism okay awesome well i shall see you guys in the next episode so take care have a great week stay creative have fun happy drawing painting I'll see you next time. Bye!